Welcome to the Pharmacist's Voice Podcast, Episode 210. I'm the host, Kim Newlove. We're talking about audio engineering skills today. I'll also throw out some motorcycle references in here just because I love bikes. Imagine this. You want to start a podcast. You're a pharmacist, a pharmacy student, a pharmacy technician, a pharmacy professor, or a pharmacy owner, and you want to get your voice out there. You're at the start line of the process, much like a fast bike starting a race. Let's say a Ducati, because they are fast. You give yourself permission to go, like someone waving a green flag at the beginning of a race. Unlike a bike on a racetrack, however, you don't know how to make your podcast go. Before you know it, it's like you've stalled out on the track. Ugh, how frustrating. There has to be a way to get to the finish line, you think. So you do some research. You read articles and you watch some YouTube videos about how to get started. Almost everything you read or watch says that if you want to start a podcast, you need to be able to record, edit, and produce audio files. You choose not to outsource the audio production, and you choose not to join a network where they'll do it for you. You accept the challenge of producing your own audio files. Now all you need is a list of basic audio engineering skills so you can pull in the clutch, hit the throttle, and go. No more feeling stalled out on the racetrack. Once you check all the boxes on your list, you'll be on your way to publishing your podcast. In this episode, I list 20 audio engineering skills that I use so that you have an idea of what you need to know if you start a podcast. I took this directly from my new online course, which is called A Behind-the-Scenes Look at the Pharmacist Voice Podcast. I help pharmacy professionals decide if they want to start a podcast by showing them behind the scenes of mine. The course will be out in April 2023. I'm excited about this episode and I am fired up about this topic because this may be just what you need to cut the learning curve and start your podcast. Now, if you're new to the Pharmacist Voice podcast, welcome. Again, my name is Kim Newlove and I'm the host. I'm a pharmacist by training, but I'm not in clinical practice anymore. I made a career transition to voice actor and podcast host. Among other things, I narrate audiobooks for women pharmacist authors, provide medical narration to clients in the pharmaceutical, biotech, and continuing medical education industries, and I narrate content for explainer videos and e-learning projects. If you have a project in mind, contact me through my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. My solo podcast episodes are about some aspect of being a pharmacist, a voice actor, a pharmacist podcaster, or my career transition from pharmacist to voice actor and podcast host. My interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate for something, educate in some way, or entertain so that you are inspired to use your voice too. This is episode 210, and you can find the show notes on my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. Just click on the podcast tab and search for episode 210. Without further ado, here's the list of 20 audio engineering skills I use. Enjoy. 20 audio engineering skills I use. Number one is patience. You must be patient when you're learning audio engineering. I must say I lacked in patience when I started. I had no idea how hard it would be. That's why I try to warn people up front all the time that audio engineering, in my opinion, is the hardest part about podcasting. Once you learn audio engineering, it's smooth sailing. There's a lot of other things to think about, your why, what's in it for the audience, things like that. But I'm telling you, my opinion, audio engineering skills are the hardest part. So number one, have patience. Number two, concentration. You must be able to concentrate. When you are editing audio, you have your headphones on. Typically, you're listening for things, ugly breaths, 
mistakes, pregnant pauses, and so many other things, you must be able to concentrate. This is not something you do while you're half watching a television show. Number three, keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts will save you time and frustration. Being able to press R for record and spacebar to stop saves me a ton of time. Those are just a couple of examples. Number four, pressing start or record is a very important skill to have. If you do not know how to press record or where the start button is, you're never going to finish. Creating a podcast is a lot like riding a bike. You need to learn how to start and stop first. That brings me to number five. Number five is stop. I needed to learn how to press stop. At first, I swear to you, I did not know how to do this. These are all things that I had to learn. Again, it's like riding a bike. You have to learn how to start and stop pretty much first. Let's move on to number six, editing. One of the most important skills I have learned as an audio engineer for podcasting is editing. But you may be asking yourself, what do you edit? You have to edit out the crap. Crap is an acronym standing for crutches, repeats, accidents, and pregnant pauses. You have to edit out the crap. Let's go through each of those one at a time. We edit out crutch words. We podcasters edit out crutch words. Not every single crutch word. You are allowed to include crutch words in your podcasts. But what you want to remove is excessive crutch words, where you're thinking of the next thing to say, and you say, um, for a really long period of time, and it's preceded by some space. After you say it, you add some more space. Let's cut that out. Editing is a great opportunity. It removes the distractions so your listener can focus on what you are saying. Edit out those crutch words, those filler words. Examples of filler words are ah, uh, um, like, you know, but, and, and so. There are many more out there. Those are just some examples. We also edit out repeats. I edit out my repeats. For example, maybe I'll start a sentence and I'll stutter a little bit and I'll say, I, I think that we need to edit out repeats. I can edit out the first I and it should make sense for the rest of the recording. You also edit out re-recorded parts. Let's say I do something and I say, no, 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 I can do that better. And I do that sentence again. Or maybe I'm doing a list and I want to say that item on the list one more time. I take out the repeat. Sometimes I talk in circles. I don't know if you do this, but sometimes I'll make the same point three different ways. With editing, I have the opportunity to remove the first two and just leave in the good one. A stands for accidents. I edit out my accidents. For example, if I'm in an interview and someone reveals that they're fed up with their employer and they're going to leave, they put in their two weeks notice, but then they realize the podcast episode is going to be aired prior to their boss knowing, I need to edit that mistake out. A lot of times people will ask me to edit out a mistake. Not a problem. I also edit out excessive noises. For example, if I am having somebody work on my house while I'm recording a podcast episode, I need to be able to edit out or silence when somebody's hammering something or if a dog's barking or if one of my kids comes in to use the printer. That's actually happened before. I need to be able to edit out things that should not be there. I also edit out sidebar conversations. For example, sometimes there's somebody that I know really well and they'll say, hold on, time out. Can I stop the interview? I just want to tell you about this one thing while we're on this topic. No problem. It's an accident, though. We didn't plan on talking about that. So I need to edit out that accident. I also edit out false starts. When I start talking before I'm ready, I have a frog in my throat and it comes out as a big croak. And I really need to get rid of that. That's a false start to me. I also edit out loud breaths. I have asthma. I often breathe audibly very loudly. You don't notice it as much when you're watching a video of me. 
but when you're listening just to the audio, it's kind of distracting. So I either silence my loud breaths or I remove them altogether. One other thing that I remove is body noises like coughs, burps, sneezes, and so on. I do not want those in my audio, and I recommend you remove yours as well. E stands for pregnant pauses. Pregnant pauses, there's a whole bunch of different kinds. For example, maybe you're on a recorded call, you're using Zoom, for example, and you know how the other person's screen freezes, and then when it comes back and it unfreezes, you hear their audio in double time? Well, sometimes a recorded conversation will record that double time talk, and ugh, you need to get rid of that because there was this big pregnant pause while somebody was frozen, and then they don't exactly sound right. When I hear that during a recording, I stop the interview and I ask my guest to say whatever they were saying again. Now, there has been a number of times where I've had to edit out a, a part because it just didn't work out. And whatever gremlin jumped into my audio, we just couldn't use that part. You have to accept less than perfection. Sometimes accidents happen. But we're talking about pregnant pauses right now. Removing those pregnant pauses during those freezes is something that I do. Also, I have had power outages during podcast interviews. Mostly, I think, on the end of the guest. One memorable one was multiple lightning strikes that took out Bruce Berger's um, his internet. So Dr. Bruce Berger can't remember which episode that was, but I was a new podcaster and I was like, whoa, what the heck happened? And he came back and said, well, we've got a lightning storm going on. We lost power a couple of times. Nothing against him, nothing against me, but there ended up being these pregnant pauses in the audio. I had to edit those out and then start back up with whatever we recorded once we got our power back and working. Sometimes there are pregnant pauses if someone needs to take a break. For example, they're drinking some water. Okay, just now I drank some water. There was a little bit of a pregnant pause. And you may have been able to hear me swallow. Therefore, I will remove that blank space. If you leave too much blank space, whoever is listening to your podcast will think perhaps they bumped the pause button. If they think they touched the pause button and they think that the podcast has stopped, they're going to take their podcast player out of their pocket. They're going to take their smartphone out of their pocket and look at it to see what the heck's going on. Try to avoid pregnant pauses. It's not good for the listener. The listener does not enjoy that. And also, you have to remove pregnant pauses, I know I do, when there's dead air while thinking. For example, when I'm recording a solo podcast episode, I'll have a list of things that I want to talk about. Sometimes I come to a point and I think, oh, geez, how am I going to explain this? I have to think there's a pregnant pause. And when I edit, I edit out that pregnant pause while I'm thinking. You may be wondering, where do I edit this stuff out? Well, it's going to happen in solo shows, so in single tracks. Or it could happen during interview shows. When you have multiple tracks, you need to know how to edit single tracks and multiple tracks. I have a pro tip for you. Now, what I like to do is when I'm editing anything, whether it's a solo show or an interview show, I create a copy. I store the original. I store the untouched original, never touch it, and then I edit the copy. I recommend that you do that as well. Why should you do that? Because if anything ever happens while you're editing and you need to go back to the original, you have an untouched original that you can draw from. It's come in handy for me more than once. Number seven, adding tracks. Sometimes I have solo shows. Other times I have interview shows. I have a template that allows me to just get up and running super quick. But for you, I would recommend that you know how to add tracks. Even I need to add tracks sometimes. For example, when I have two guests or two or more guests and adding tracks is fairly easy, you also need to know how to add tracks if you're going to add music or special effects. An example of a special effect is adding fireworks or maybe bleeping out a bad word, a curse word. Let's move on to number eight. Importing files. Every time I do a podcast interview, I need to 
import files. I import the host track and the guest track from my interview recording software, which is Squadcast or Zoom. I also have to import music from Storyblocks, which is where I get my royalty-free music. Sometimes I use special effects like fireworks or bleeping out curse words, and I get those special effects also from Storyblocks. I import them into my DAW and I put them in their own track. I also sometimes record an interview on the road using my smartphone. Then I have to import something from my voice memos into my DAW. I make a separate track for it, and it's important to know how to import that. I usually airdrop it to my computer because I'm a Mac user, but for you, it might be something else. It might look like something else. Number nine, record room tone. I do this for solo shows and interview shows. I record my room tone prior to the main recording. With a solo show, it's pretty easy to do, but with an interview show, I typically tell a guest I'm going to give five seconds of silence prior to welcoming you to the show, and they always understand, but they don't know that what I'm doing is recording room tone so that I can use it during the editing process. I can put that room tone over a loud distracting noise or one of my loud breaths or whatever I feel I need it for. Number 10, copy and paste. Knowing how to copy and paste is important with a DAW. I use this skill all the time. It's a lot like word processing documents. You take something, for example, room tone, you copy it and you paste it over something that's not supposed to be there a dog barking, an interruption, a loud breath, etc. Or knowing how to copy something and paste it in like a bonus track. For example, I have the Pharmacist Authors series coming up in June of 2023. I have a number of pharmacist authors who are providing samples of their audiobooks to me. I have to copy that and paste it into my DAW. That's important to know how to do that copy and paste skill. I also know that there's plenty of people out there that have a professional intro or outro that they have to copy from an email and paste into the DAW. I did that, I think, for one episode. It wasn't right for me, therefore I don't do it anymore. I just do a custom intro and outro for every single episode. Voicemail is also something that I could copy and paste into an episode. For example, if a fan leaves a voicemail message and I want to include it in a podcast episode, or if somebody recommends a drug name that they struggle with that I want to use for a drug name pronunciation episode, I could include that voicemail MP3 in a podcast episode. Knowing how to copy that and paste it in is an important skill to have. Number 11, adjusting tracks. I don't want to scare you, but every once in a while, I will record a podcast interview that is out of sync. For example, I'll welcome somebody to the show, and they're already talking by the time I'm saying the last words. That didn't happen in real life, live, when we were recording the interview. That's how I know something's wrong. Then what I have to do is just shift it over a little bit so the rest of the interview makes sense. It can be scary, but once you've done it, once you've tackled it once or twice, you'll be a pro. I also have to adjust tracks when I'm including a post-production intro and outro. I'll have the interview kind of in the middle, and I need to insert the introduction before the interview and an outro after the interview. Therefore, what I need to do is insert space, and that includes, you know, adjusting tracks. Knowing how to adjust tracks will come in handy in more than one situation. Let's move on to number 12, setting start and stop markers is a very important skill that I use all the time. This helps me export a file. When you have a finished file and you want to export it to an MP3 so you can upload it to your podcast host as your podcast episode, you need to tell your computer where that file starts and stops. It's kind of like looking at a timeline, like a a linear clock, a horizontal clock, It starts at zero and it goes to, for example, 30 minutes. You need to tell your computer where that file starts and stops. Otherwise, it may have a default. The default on my DAW is five minutes. If I have a a 30-minute episode and I end up stopping it at five minutes, well, people are going to miss out on the other content. Therefore, setting your start and stop markers is very important. Number 13. 
mixing down an MP3. This is what I jokingly call cooking an MP3. This is after I've set my start and stop markers and I know exactly how long this episode's supposed to be. I press a button and the computer will give me my MP3. There are settings that you need to choose. I choose to mix mine down at 44 1 and 128. If you don't know what that means, no problem, you will learn. Now, if I have a solo podcast episode without music, I mix that down as a mono file. If I have a file with music, it becomes a stereo file. There's a lot of different buttons that you need to pick when you mix down an MP3. Number 14, raise or lower the volume. The goal here is to create a consistent volume throughout your audio track, throughout your MP3 file. If your guest is way louder than the host, that's you, then what you need to do is even that out somehow. You need to know how to raise or lower the volume of the guest and the host. Don't make your listener ride the volume knob and raise it when somebody's quiet and lower it when somebody's loud. Number 15, name files. I name my files all the time. Typically, they are something like TPV episode 210. Super simple. If you name your files right, it's easy to find them again. Number 16, saving files. Save your files early and often on your computer so that if your computer crashes, you don't lose your information. Save your files also to an external hard drive or a flash drive. Always have some sort of an external backup. And when your computer's completely full of podcast episodes, this has happened to me multiple times, you need to save them, remove them, and then delete them. It's kind of scary. (laughs) It's like deleting all this work. But I do have a lesson in this module about saving files to external hard drives. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. It's a little scary, but you can do it. Number 17, finding files. This is a skill that you need to have because you need to be able to find your files after you've saved them. So please save your files so that you can find them easily. You'll need to be able to find them on your computer and on your external hard drive. So be careful how you name them so that you can find them later. And this is really important. If you do not publish podcast episodes often, you need to be able to find it even though a whole entire month has passed. For example, I record podcast interviews sometimes months in advance. Therefore, I need to name them so that I can find them. If I can do this, you can do this. Number 18, creating a template. We all like to save time and smooth out processes, streamline things. Creating a template is something that will save you time because you will use it over and over again. This is an advanced skill I do not recommend that you learn how to do this right out the gate. But if somebody can create a template for you and you can have that right out the gate, that's highly desirable. This is especially desirable when you have an interview set up. If you don't have to create an extra track, add a music track, or add a special effects track every single time, it just saves you time. Number 19, other advanced skills. Now, there's tons of things that you can do as an audio engineer. Some of the things that I do are I repair my audio. I use a program called Isotope RX-8. It is audio repair software. It is something that I do at the end after I've already created all of my files. They're edited. They're pretty much good to go. I run them through RX prior to actually mixing it down. Other things that I add are EQ, compression, gain, and an expander. There's other things that I could do too, like create special effects for my track. I could make myself sound like an elf. And this is something that I plan to do around Christmas time, Christmas 2023. I've never done this, always wanted to. It's coming up. I'm excited. And finally, number 20, the final audio engineering skill that I use is. Grace. G-R-A-C-E. Grace. I am not a perfectionist. I am overcoming my pharmacist perfectionism, but I would recommend to you, give yourself grace. 
Don't be a perfectionist. I no longer am. I let things go. I leave mistakes in, filler words. I do the best that I can. I would encourage you not to over-edit. I try not to over-edit my podcast episodes. They're not perfect. Anybody that looks back on my three years of experience can agree with that. I don't over-edit and I am not perfect. I wish you all the best. And I want you to remember, try to go for progress over perfection. You do not have to be perfect when you start. Seek to make progress. Don't seek to be perfect. And don't rob yourself of the opportunity to reflect. 10 episodes after you get started, you will be able to hear your progress. And that's exciting. I know I can hear my progress even 10 episodes ago. Don't rob yourself of the opportunity to reflect. That's all I've got for the list of 20 audio engineering skills that I use. Thank you for joining me for episode 210 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. To read the list of 20 audio engineering skills that I use in the show notes, go to thepharmacistvoice.com, click on the podcast tab, and search for episode 210. My social media links are there as well. Check out my online course in April 2023. I'm excited to get it up and running. You'll also find that at thepharmacistvoice.com. In this case, just click on the store tab and it should come up. It can also be found at kimnewlove.com. The name of the course again is a behind the scenes look at the Pharmacist Voice podcast. If you know someone who would like this episode, maybe because they are thinking about starting a podcast too, please share this with them. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player or YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. I'll be back next Friday, April 7th with a drug name pronunciation episode. Thanks for listening today. I'll talk to you next week.